Salinas Valley Memorial Healthcare System receives top honors for cardiac surgery and interventional procedures. Hospitals that receive a five-star rating should take great pride because they represent a very elite group. A highly specialized center opens for the treatment of wounds that resist conventional medical care. And now it's a whole different ball game, and I really believe that this, this is really going to help me, this is really going to heal. And we'll tell you why this young Salinas girl is getting national attention. That and more next on Lifeline TV. Hello and welcome to Lifeline TV. I'm Dr. Bob Morali and this is a cardiac rehabilitation center at Salinas Valley Memorial Healthcare System where heart patients come for exercise, education, and support. It's an important part of the continuum of care for Salinas Valley Memorial's regional heart program which has just been nationally ranked as a five-star hospital for cardiac surgery and interventional procedures. A recent study by the nation's leading provider of independent hospital ratings, Health Grades, shows Salinas Valley Memorial to be the top-rated heart hospital in Santa Clara, Santa Cruz, and Monterey counties. Part of its eighth annual study on hospital quality in America, HealthGrades independently analyzed nearly 5,000 hospitals in all 50 states, assessing their clinical outcomes and quality. The interpretation of the star rating is quite simple. You can think about what a five-star hotel or uh, a five-star restaurant means high quality. Uh, one star being worse than average and three star being about average. We are very proud of the fact that we really have been notified that our open heart program for bypass surgery as well as our cardiology program for invasive cardiology have both received five-star ratings. On average, less than 15% of all hospitals will receive a five-star rating. Patients who are doing their homework should absolutely try as much as they can to go to a five-star hospital for their procedure. We're extremely proud that the hospital, uh, being in a rural area, can offer services of a five-star rating, uh, of which there are very few in the state of California have been able to achieve that status uh, right here in the community where they no longer have to go outside the community to receive the highest quality of care. You know, one of the things that keeps Salinas Valley Memorial's heart program on the leading edge is its commitment to medical research. Physicians here actively pursue research projects that bring the very latest technologies to their patients. It's cutting edge, cutting edge therapy. And, um, and it's, you know, it's, I am always really proud to say when I talk to a patient about the procedure is that we're a, one of 10 hospitals or one of six hospitals that are doing this procedure. My observation is our physicians are visionaries. They go seeking out research protocols because they believe that either a procedure is something that is worthwhile or that maybe something's been working well but they know that perhaps there's an area that could be improved and, um, and research is a way to make that happen. Another exciting research project is about to get underway. Salinas Valley Memorial is joining forces with NASA to research the effects of gravity on the human body. Essentially, what NASA wants to do is take healthy individuals, and those individuals will undergo a number of, of radiology tests, an MRI, a CAT scan, ultrasound, and perhaps a nuclear med study. And what NASA will do with that information is merge it into a computer model so they have a 3D model of the patient's cardiovascular system, their kidneys, and their bladder. And what they hope to do is look at volume changes of normal individuals and apply that to astronauts when they're up in space to see how gravity affects those systems. Another way in which Salinas Valley Memorial's Regional Heart Program distinguishes itself is through forums conducted here with physicians from across the country. In this meeting recently, leaders in the industry gathered at Salinas Valley Memorial discuss a revolutionary procedure 
for clearing blocked arteries in the leg called cryoplasty. Dr. James Joy, a physician on the Salinas Valley Memorial Medical Staff, developed a protocol for treatment which has received FDA approval. This particular gathering is a, you know, it's a unique experience. This is not something that, uh, that all fact, factions of medicine do. And it's the first time we've done it related to this technology, but it's uh, you know, personally flattering that these physicians would take time out of their busy lives and practices to come out here. Um, but it's also an incredible opportunity for us to share experiences. There are about 30 physicians here that represent centers of excellence from across the country. We enjoy uh, hearing the experience of others. Uh, we get new ideas. You know, areas that don't go well for us have been problems have been solved by other physicians in other parts of the country with different experiences. Uh, we're together with cardiologists who do interventions as well as vascular surgeons uh, and everyone brings a different expertise to the table so it, it's a learning experience for everyone here. This is really a, a prestigious you know group of individuals. I mean I don't think you realize that the people here represent the greatest thought leaders in this field and a collaboration of vascular surgeons, interventional radiologists, and uh, interventional cardiologists who specialize in this sort of thing. And these represent a group of people who are thought leaders because they were involved in uh, treating this for a long time but had early access to this technology after it was uh, made available through uh, cryovascular efforts. One of the inventors of this whole technology is here, Jim Joy, and I think that's really been nice because we, we brought in a lot of different people with various expertise from various fields to sort of bring their experiences with this technique and as well as get feedback from both the inventors of the device and people, the early developers, and, and sort of mash our experiences with theirs to sort of, you know, to gain knowledge and to go ahead and you know, bring that back to our own places. Well, you can read uh, articles, you can go to talks, and all of those are worthwhile, but to actually be present uh, in a hospital setting in which a experienced uh, physician, an expert in a new technology, is actually doing it uh, live, so you can actually see all of the maneuvers, you can ask questions of that individual during the performance of the procedure, just adds a dimension of, uh, of learning that's uh, not otherwise achievable. One of the nice things about this course is that uh, uh, you are on the forefront, this hospital, and the doctors here are really, uh, you know, riding the crest of what I think will be a wave of, of treatments and interventions that will be very beneficial to the patients in our communities. Well, you know, it's funny. I was watching the presentations uh, earlier and I uh, made a comment that apparently there's nothing I can do at Columbia University Medical Center that you can't do in Salinas, California. Mm -hmm. right. So, despite all our resources, uh, you guys are advantaged to have Dr. Joy uh, here. So you have early access to really this innovative and, uh, and medically changing technology. A lot of other hospitals could learn from this approach because, uh, you know, of course you have to have quality assurance, you have to have guidelines, you have to have credentialing, all those things being in place. There's also a spirit uh, of wanting to be progressive with your medicine, of wanting to offer patients the, the, the latest, greatest thing. And, uh, you know, and an open policy like this is, is key. Quality drives us, and I think that their testimony is uh, very exciting. And of course, I have always believed we are at that level, but it's sure exciting to see where some other people that are known internationally just reinforce that statement. The cryoplasty is a, a new, novel, and innovative technique which allows you to stretch open the blood vessel and at the same time deliver cold energy, actually minus 10 degrees Celsius, which not only opens the vessel, but prevents the blood vessel from forming the scar tissue responsible for reblockage after treatment. There are between 220 and 240,000 major amputations every year in the U.S. and in Europe. This is an, ep an epidemic. One out of every four diabetics will have it. The uh, technology is now in its infancy and we're really at the beginning of what's going to be a fabulous era of applying cold techniques to vascular disease. Uh, so we're all very excited here. Again, we're trying to get the basics uh, squared away, learn from the experience of others, but I think in the next decade you're going to see tremendous improvements with this technology and other technologies that involve the cold therapy or cryotherapy with vascular disease. Patients who would have undergo surgery, five days in the hospital, six weeks of recovery, 
Now they're able to do this as an outpatient, essentially no recovery and no surgical incision to heal from. I think people need to know about this, uh, and I think they need to be a, an informed consumer, informed enough to at least realize that one, they can be treated for the pain that they have in their legs when they walk. Two, they don't have to feel that it's hopeless in terms of uh, amputation if they happen to be the unfortunate patient that gets a, a wound on their foot. Usually it's a patient with diabetes and or a patient who's a heavy smoker. Uh, we're here now looking at a new, a new technology. There's a handful of people here. How many people really know about this in medicine? Not that many. So if anybody's watching that has a friend, a neighbor, a, a, a relative, ask questions, call this hospital, or, for example, find out about it, because they may, in fact, have more options than either bypass, which is good, but it's a bigger deal, uh, or amputation. We're understated, but I think people that really know medicine know that we are on the leading edge, and we make it look easy to accomplish, but we know it takes a lot of hard work, a great staff. People are highly motivated to make this successful. And I think it's also known in the region that this is a premier program, but we also have a great OB service that Obstetrics is over, overseen by Stanford University as well as our oncology program. So it's just part of our campus that we're ex extending and we will move into more research within the region. So it's kind of our commitment to um, stay local but have a very high quality program. Our heart patients learn about the benefits of physical activity here at the Cardiac Rehabilitation Center at Salinas Valley Memorial. People recovering from a heart attack or a heart procedure or diagnosed with a heart condition come here for support in the recovery process. Here they exercise in a closely monitored environment. They're educated about healthy living habits and they receive support from a dedicated staff. George came to cardiac rehab after he had his first surgery, but in 50 years. Um, in April, he had bypass, uh, three bypasses and a valve replacement, and he's just about ready to graduate. Um, he's, you're 89, and he didn't take medications until now, so going to the doctors and all these things are new for him, but we've got him exercising for about 45 minutes, plus he's up to three-pound dumbbells. You're almost ready for fours, and we've got getting him so... His first goal originally was to get back to work and to be able to travel. So we, we've met that. He's been going to the valley. And uh, you did go down to, you went down to Imperial Valley one time, right? I flew yeah. down there, yeah. yes. Yeah. So we just had to get, convince him to have a driver, though. So not drive I himself. I a driver or anything over 40 miles or whatever it is. So what rehab does is help you establish the habits to prevent a second event, another heart event occurring. Um, we help the patients with their medications, eating healthy, um, just following what they should do. And they're able to spend time with us three days a week so we can really kind of reinforce the things that they should be doing. They have an opportunity to ask questions all the time they're in rehab. And a follow-up with the doctor one or two times, they just don't get a lot of individual attention or time. And, and the ability to just ask questions, things that they're not sure about. Well, they got a hell of a crew here, and everyone of them's nice, and they monitor everything pretty darn good. And we're all in the same group. The heart patient is mm -hmm. is what they, you know, they haven't got different bunch here. They're all heart patients, and most of them are younger than I am, so they go like Elsie. <laughs> <laughs> I cannot praise the cardiac rehab enough. They take every phase of your life into consideration, tell you what you can do, what you cannot do. They give you all kinds of helpful hints. They've got literature that they will give to you to read. They have all kinds of classes. There's classes for stress, diabetic care. There's all kinds of information. They were so caring and so careful and they really checked me out. If I had any kind of a question, they told me I was to feel free to ask anything I needed to know or anything that bothered me. I was to ask about it because I, they didn't want me to be concerned about anything. And they would either have the answer or they'd get the answer. And you can't ask for more than that from professional people. And they are very professional. Okay, keep pedaling, George. Pedaling? Keep pedaling. No stopping.
just like you usually do. We're going to give you a break, George, because you went longer on the treadmill. Yeah, you better. Uh, okay, here we go. 29 watts or better. Okay. All right, call me at 7.30. <laughs> There's such warm people, warm-hearted. And you just feel, you feel as though you've made friends. Not just acquaintances, but you've made some friends. Salinas Valley Memorial Hospital has been a real blessing in my life. Another important way that Salinas Valley Memorial is working for the heart health of our entire community is through the HeartSave program, which is putting automated external defibrillators, or AEDs, into a variety of community locations. Well, good morning, everybody, and thank you for coming. I'm Tony Solicito. I'm the chief of police of the city of Seaside. Recently, police agencies from throughout Monterey County joined together with the Sheriff's Department to kick off the Heart Save Patrol Program. The goal is to get an AED into every patrol car in the county. Automated external defibrillators, AEDs, are an important addition to the Salinas Police Department. They're going to enable us to serve our community just that much better and to save lives. Uh, I firmly believe that because as first responders, uh, police officers are traditionally the first person on scene of medical emergencies. Each one of these, these AEDs, in my view, represents lives saved. And so I would encourage people to donate to this program. That's the only way it's going to happen, is if we can get the money to complete outfitting all of our patrol cars. Again, that's going to be a cost of over $300,000. And we have now a check for $25,000 for the Heart Save program and for defibrillators, and we're just thrilled to death to present it to us. The Willis W. and Ethel M. Clark Foundation of Pebble Beach contributed $25,000 to the cause, and Salinas Valley Memorial Health Care System matched that amount. Another $5,000 was donated from the Malcolm and Joanne Ballard Fund of the Community Foundation for Monterey County. With these initial donations, Salinas Valley Memorial was able to purchase 28 AEDs for local patrol cars. It'll take 139 total AEDs to reach the goal of an AED in every patrol car in Monterey County. Patrol vehicles are out, in fact, on patrol all the time and consequently uh, can be there within minutes rather than within tens of minutes. You know, I really want to thank the Salinas Valley Memorial Health Care System for stepping up to the plate and taking the lead on this project. Uh, I think that, uh, you know, without that effort, uh, we wouldn't be where we are today. And as far as I'm concerned, uh, it's uh, a premier program and from what I understand, one of the only ones in the state uh, like this. Uh, this shows a tremendous partnership uh, between the hospital and our community and for that I'm grateful. I also want to thank the Clark Foundation for their very, very generous support uh, in this very important life-saving project and uh, I think that uh, once uh, the first time it's used, it's going to ha have paid for itself. It's just been a joy to work with the hospital and your Heart Save program and uh, I just know this is going to be a big, big success and the word gets out people will want to do it, and then you have survivors from this who prove that it really works. That's important, too. Right there, the shot. Let's see if it comes out. There he is. Sudden cardiac arrest is death due to an abnormal heart rhythm. Sudden cardiac arrest is not the same as a heart attack. A heart attack occurs when one or more of the heart's major blood vessels are blocked. This cuts off blood and oxygen to the heart and the heart muscle starts to die. But sudden cardiac arrest occurs when an abnormal rhythm causes the heart to suddenly stop pumping blood. The bottom part of the heart is an abnormal heart rhythm called the ventricular fibrillation. When all the little heart muscle cells in the bottom part of the heart are doing their own thing and not working together. This causes the heart not to be able to squeeze and people usually faint because they have no blood pressure. And if that ventricular fibrillation, chaotic heart rhythm is not restored to normal, they can die. Sudden cardiac arrest usually ends in death, and it doesn't have to be that way. You know, if we make this technology available, we can interrupt that cycle of death to so many people.
Numbers tell the true story of sudden cardiac arrest. It's a leading cause of death among adults in our country. Every year it kills 250 to 400,000 people. Once every minute, another American succumbs suddenly, without warning. Typically, only 5% of cardiac arrest victims survive, often because help arrives too late. In areas with a high number of defibrillators, that survival rate can jump to as high as 49%. In Monterey County, our survival rate is approximately 20%, above the national average, but far below what it could be. It takes only four minutes after sudden cardiac arrest before irreversible brain damage begins. A victim's chances of survival are reduced 7 to 10 percent every minute that passes without defibrillation. Few attempts at resuscitation succeed after 10 minutes. Most victims are middle-aged or elderly. The average age is about 65 years old. Many victims are much younger. When I have seen people have a cardiac arrest outside the hospital, if they don't get CPR or defibrillation early, they often don't survive to leave the hospital. On the other hand, if you have early defibrillation, they may walk out of the hospital just fine without any damage at all to their brain or heart. So far, Salinas Valley Memorial's Heart Save program has put 150 AEDs into our community. Salinas Valley Memorial opened a new wound care center recently, which brings advanced technologies to healing wounds that resisted conventional treatment. Nationally, health experts estimate that three to five million people suffer from chronic non-healing wounds that result from a number of factors, including diabetes, trauma, poor circulation, and insect bites. This is a growing problem because of increasing obesity, diabetes, and an aging population. I was actually very nervous about this, and I wondered if I was going to lose my leg, and because it's been going on for three months. And uh, but I, 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 I was just at, when I left, I was such at ease. There is hope. That's the the great thing about being here. Is some of these patients have even you know been told that they may lose their extremity, they may lose their leg or their foot if their wound hasn't healed because of infection. And um, here we offer that hope with them being seen weekly and our doctors being trained in wound care and staff. We know the cutting edge technology on wound care, so we can help to save that limb. We have a team of physicians who um, have multi-specialty backgrounds, who've had an interest in wound care and advanced training. So when you come to the wound care center, you're not seeing a um, physician, a general physician, you're seeing a specialist who has um, advanced training. We have six physicians, we have two infectious disease, we have a plastic surgeon, a general surgeon, a podiatrist, and a vascular surgeon. I could not believe it that I actually slept almost a whole night without having pain in my, and I did not take any pills. Oh, wow. Wow. So I really think that the procedure is working and I know it's gonna work for me. It's a wonderful place. God, I'm so happy to be here, be taken care of. The wound care center, that's all we treat, is the wounds. So when they come here, that's all we're focusing on. Most people don't think that there's anything that can be done about a chronic wound. They think that it's just a sore that they have to live with. Our physicians are wonderful. The nursing staff is very supportive in helping their wounds heal. And it's just a great place. <laughs> now it's a whole different ball game, and I really believe that this, this is really going to help me. This is really going to heal. Along with this high level of clinical excellence, the Regional Wound Care Center offers a staff of physicians and wound care specialists and a full continuum of care through our hospital services. Patients can self-refer or be referred by their own physician. For information or to make an appointment, call 831-759-3236 or toll free at 1-888-755-7861. Extension 3236. Children's Miracle Network has the unique advantage of being able to fund not only programs and equipment and services here at Salinas Valley Memorial, but we're also able to fund a lot of different community outreach programs and in some cases individual children. So I'd say about half of the funds that we raise each year go back out to various community programs. He gets run around. And, um, 
It's just, it's just fun. Yeah, eight thirty this morning. She wanted to put that uniform on, and, and all these kids I've heard their parents say the same thing. You know, this is such a good time for them to come out here. Bye. Yeah. Did you want them for dad? Yeah, we do. Bye. We're all special needs kids. It's just that uh, we're all at different degrees. Louis, Louis, will come back over here and pass it to Eric, and then Eric can take it on. Exactly. They say she has brain damage, and I would just look for other resources, you know, to kind of get her back and I found this on the internet. When she sees the water and she gets excited, I mean, just, just seeing her smile makes me happy. And knowing that the people that are in the pool with her can make her smile just like that. Oh, it makes me happy. Oh, goodness. So good. It just does have this ripple effect that a donation can help more than just the individual child. It really helps the family and makes a strong community. It just makes the whole community strong and healthy. Last year we had over 42 activities. We accommodated over a thousand people. Well, that wraps it up for this edition of Lifeline TV. As we close tonight, we take a look at the highlights of a biking event that raised funds for the nonprofit organization Best Buddies. A Salinas Valley Memorial team rode from Carmel Valley to the finish line 100 miles south at Hearst Castle in San Simeon. Thanks for joining us. I'm Dr. Bob Morali. See you next time. to be here. I'm so proud to be involved in this program, which I've been involved with for uh, since its inception, really. And uh, I believe in it because I think it promotes unity. And I think it teaches us that all of us are more alike than we are different. I should speed up just a little bit. How are you doing, Lance? <laughs> Lance, it's hurting! It's trying to drop. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Looking for that camera cycle so he knows the angle. <laughs>